Welcome to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DB, DJ Rain. And when we come back, we're going to be talking to the founder of the ElSharieAlert.com website. So make sure you stay tuned. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DB DJ Rain, and I'm sitting here with El Sheree Dean, the founder of the El Sheree Alert.com. Sheree, how are you? I am great. How are you doing? Good. Glad Good. to have you on the show. I'm so happy you invited me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, before we get started on all the things that you have going on, which is an immense amount of stuff, yeah. tell everybody just a little bit about yourself, um, who you are, where you come from, and you know, okay. just kind of let them know who you are. Okay, um, well again, I'm El Sheree Dean. Um, was born actually in Tupelo, Mississippi um, by Anthony Melissa Dean. And um, a shout out. Yeah, gotta do that. Um, I, you know, after we left Tupelo, you know, we moved into Jackson, I think, when I was little. Mm -hmm. Moved into Tuscaloosa, Alabama, so I'm a big Bama fan. Really big Bama fan. I won't hold that against you. Excuse me? <laughs> so I absolutely love Tuscaloosa. Um, and then once I got a little older, I think mm -hmm. in, we're going into eighth grade, I moved to Peoria, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really started coming to myself, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, got some good friends and you know, went through middle school and high school and started college at Bradley University. Um, and I think uh, that's when it kind of hit for me mm -hmm. that I like to be involved in everything. Right. So. Um, at Bradley University, freshman year, I looked like I was about 12. So I made mom cut all my hair off, so I looked a little older. Mm -hmm. um, I signed up for skydiving. I signed up for NAACP, NCNW. I signed up for everything. And wow. I wasn't necessarily a leader in a lot of those things because I had never really been a leader. I've been a part of different organizations before. You know, I served on Key Club and SAD in high school just to get out of class. Right. But um, in college, I know it, it was different. Like they were holding meetings and, you know, they mm -hmm. were really doing stuff. So um, I kind of just sat back in the background and watched them. I, I observed a lot of things. Um, so I think after that and when I transferred to Jackson State, mm -hmm. that's when I realized, um, hmm, let me try to get to know some of the people here mm -hmm. and, you know, transitioning from a, um, well, a predominantly white university to an HBCU was kind of challenging, mm -hmm. um, but I learned a lot and I learned to embrace it and mm -hmm. it helped me grow and, um, you know, just experience some other things. And I had a great time at Jackson State. Um, end up joining the American Marketing Association there and ran my mouth a little bit too much about events and how to raise money. Mm -hmm. um, and so, of course, naturally, the president was like, well, you're going to be funds development director. So I was like, okay, whatever nice. they do. So, I mean, I had a great time um, put, helping putting together events and stuff like that on Jackson State's campus. And then at the same time, I was working. I've been working since I was 15. Mm -hmm. So I've always wanted to earn my own money. Mm -hmm. So in school, although my dad really didn't like it, I was working as well. I worked for the Epilepsy Foundation. Mm -hmm. And doing so, I was in charge of putting together a summer camp for children with epilepsy in the state of Mississippi. So that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So that gave me a little bit more experience um, to bring what I've learned there and some of the techniques um, to use in putting organizations and, or events together. Mm -hmm. I would take that with the American Marketing Association and try to help raise funds so we could go to conference. Right. So then I got kind of, my arms were twisted a little bit into being, or uh, running for president for AMA. Being that I'm a business administration major, you know, some of the marketing students were like, oh no, I don't think she should, you know, she's mm -hmm. not marketing. And, you know, I also at the same time was doing radio. I worked for WJSU and I had a great time there. That's something I just kind of threw there. I was actually an on air announcer. Okay. And, yeah. Like, hey, up next is, you know, oh, Tony nice. James. I did Quiet Storm. What was it? Um, Oh, it was something uh, silent, something quiet storm on Saturday evenings. Mm -hmm. And I did some throughout the um, week as well. And that was a lot of fun. How long did you do that for? Um, I did that, let's see, I think I started Jackson State spring 04. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and ended when I graduated in 07. Nice. So that, that was a lot of fun, and that helped me um, with speaking. Mm -hmm. Even though I was behind a mic and no one could see me when I got up to do my presentations in class, that helped me. Right. I was comfortable even though I was in front of people. Right. So I, I think with all the different experiences that I've had, it's made me a well-rounded person. And um, I don't know. I'm just one of those people who likes to get involved with different things, love community events, love mm -hmm. being around people. Right. Anything that's going to be fun and positive, I'm all for it. Good. <laughs> nice. Um, now, before we get into all the things that you have going on, mm -hmm. tell us um, about some of these mini hats that you wear um, right now. Okay. Um, I have quite a few, uh, although I'm trying, I'm trying to trim some a little bit. Um, Right now, I actually or do it like this, okay? My real job, I don't know why I, I like to say it, this is because I get a 401, 401k. Right. Um, this is, I work for the Greater Jackson Chamber Partnership mm -hmm. with the Chamber Plus, and we deal with small um, businesses, health care, life, and dental insurance. Mm -hmm. And we work in conjunction with Blue Cross Blue Shield in Mississippi. Um, so I help with different projects. Um, within Chamber Plus and then whatever projects that our CEO has for the partnership. Uh, one of the things that I love and I was able to do was once um, the Chamber Plus and um, the partnership started this health care or health fair mm -hmm. type event. We got all of the um, university or the University Hospital of Jackson Heart, um, St. Dominic's, all of the local hospitals. We got them all involved. Um, to come together to put on a free health event for members of the chamber and that's mm -hmm. how it kind of started the first year was just for members and um, I was looking up they didn't I don't know if they didn't have any people or they just really wanted you know to not have this something that to worry about but I end up doing all the marketing and I really enjoyed doing that mind you I'm not a graphic designer or anything right. like that, but I'll try anything once and or I keep trying it to do it myself well I end up um, branding the event and it's now called the Heartbeats of Jackson and it, it's an annual event and they serve hundreds of people every year that they get to go through um, heart uh, screenings, mm -hmm. heart health screenings, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And they check the blood pressure and all of that and you get to actually talk to real life doctors and they actually do follow ups and everything and it's helped a lot of people. I mean the first year one man was uh, was so ill Mm -hmm. He didn't know he was ill. He was a walking time bomb, and they had the ambulance come and take him. Really? So it, it, was, so, it was that serious. So um, I'm really proud to be a part of something like that, and, that's some, and I can say that's a part of my job. But mm -hmm. in a way, I'm also, you know, doing right. something for the community. So that's one thing. Um, working with Mississippi Great Weekend, uh, last year I was co-chair. And we have all these events basically uniting uh, Greek organizations. Mm -hmm. I'm not Greek, mm -hmm. um, however, but again, if it's positive and it's serving the community, I'm all for it. Right. Um, gosh, what else do I do? Um, on the marketing team for Guapington Enterprises that was started by a good friend of mine. Um, he's from uh, Moss Point, Mississippi, but mm -hmm. he started this while he was in D.C. working on the Hill for, well, not really on the Hill, but mm -hmm. working in, um, I think, accounting or something. And he decided, you know, he wanted to start his own business. Guapington Enterprises has modeling, um, different marketing things, uh, mentoring. It's just a whole bunch of different stuff. It's a whole plethora of stuff for the enterprise. So I deal with, I work with the marketing team on that. J. Lee Productions um, on the J. Lee team helped market that as well. And I have no idea what else I'm doing right now. I, I have so you. much going on. <laughs> it sounds like well, we're going to take a small break. Okay. Um, when we come back, we're going to find out uh, a little bit more about what... Miss El Sheree Dean has going on, uh, and plus some other projects. So make sure you stay tuned. To connect with El Sheree, log on to www.theelsheriealert.com or email thealert at gmail.com or Facebook, The El Sheree Alert, Twitter, The El Sheree, Instagram, The El Sheree Alert, and LinkedIn, El Sheree Alert.
Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network. Exposure TV is produced by Peaches, host and producer of On Location TV. Thanks to House of Pain for their assistance. Check out DV DJ Rain and the Nasty Show at the Best Nectar After Party Monday, October the 8th at Club Magoo's with special guests DJ Doc Rock and Club La Vila resident DJ NYU. Doors open at 10 p.m. Death Tell DJs. Death Tell DJs. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV DJ Rain. And we're sitting here talking to Miss El Sheree Dean um, with the El Sheree Alert .com. Now we were talking about some of the many hats you wear, mm -hmm. um, and there's a couple more that you needed to mention. Um, yes, have to mention uh, D Communications Group. It's a family-based um, business, mm -hmm. family-owned, and basically we assist different organizations and businesses with marketing and public relation needs. Mm -hmm. And um, my job is marketing, so I do anything and everything that's marketing. Mm -hmm. um, I may even now, produce some stuff for them. I get, uh -huh. I get this right. Like you went to school for business administration. Yes. But you're doing like a bunch of stuff with marketing. Yes, and let me tell you why I chose business. I actually started um, when I was at Bradley University. Mm -hmm. I um, my major was computer science, and the reason why I got into that was because I thought making videos would be cool. Mm -hmm. um, video games, I thought that would be fun. Well, I realized that I don't really like computers because they don't talk back to me and they don't huh. actually tell me what's wrong when I get a code wrong. Right. So that was the most frustrating thing. And I switched over to healthcare because, of, of course, I love helping helping people. Mm -hmm. So I thought healthcare administration. I was also working at um, Methodist Hospital in Peoria, Illinois at the time. Well, I got bored with it. So then I was like, well, I want to stick with some sort of business. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, I just pick business administration. I learn everything. Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just felt like it's a melting pot. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'll have a chance to dibble and dabble in everything. So I mean, that's kind of how. From the time I've like <laughs> met you, you know, like marketing just seems like your avenue. Like just yeah. watching you work. I think you know. the closer to the end of my uh, maybe my last year at Jackson State, my senior year. I was like, maybe I should have majored in marketing, <laughs> maybe, but right. I wasn't about to change and start over, <laughs> right. so I just stuck with it and said, hey. I, I mean, it, it, to me, I mean, it, like the degree would be great, but right. like you, you're doing a lot of like hands-on stuff and the different things, you, different places you've put yourself, have, you know, have helped, you know, cultivate you into a really good marketing right, person. Right, right. And actually, that's the kind of person I am. If I need to learn hands-on. I right. can't not, like, I love to read, mm -hmm. but I do not like to read a textbook mm -hmm. because that doesn't help me. I need to be able to do it and see it. Right. Um, so that I'm a visual person, so that's, you know, I don't know. I am, too, the, to a certain extent. Like, yeah. I don't know, the whole correspondence thing. Yeah, right, I, just, I, I just can't just, do with that. Uh -uh. So that's what I do with D Communications Group, mm -hmm. um, and I'm learning graphic design on my own. I'm nice. playing around with that, doing some things, and I'm learning. I mess mm -hmm. up a lot, but I'm having fun learning right. it, and uh, hopefully I'll take a real class one day. But um, mm -hmm. So I do different things with uh, D Communications Group, especially events, um, any major events and stuff. We get contracted, do a lot of golf tournaments, and we've done a few weddings. So it's just different things, you know. Now you said family on business that yes. your family? Yes, my okay. family. Um, actually, my dad started this uh, about a year and a half ago. Okay. And it's been going well, kind of under the radar a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, haven't really done any major marketing, but it's been a lot of word of mouth. Right. So that's helped. And okay. we're working on different marketing strategies now to really um, get the name out. Now tell me about Denim, Denim. Mag. Denim Magazine is super exciting. It's a high fashion magazine mm -hmm. and it is top notch. I know no other magazine like it. Um, based out of Mississippi, which I am very proud of. Uh, my good friend, um, Jay Bolin, he's a celebrity stylist mm -hmm. from Jackson. Um, 
he and Sterling Photography, uh, or Will Sterling, and Chanel, the graphic designer, and also a great model. Um, it's just a group of people, and also Jay Structure, who does our makeup and everything. We all, Jay brought us all together. Mm -hmm. uh, he called me one day. He said, Twin, I need you to do something for me. Oh, we call each other Twin because our birthday is on the same day. Mm -hmm. But he's older than me. <laughs> by a couple of hours <laughs> but he called me and he said hey I got a job for you I told you I was gonna snatch you up for something and I didn't know what he was gonna have me doing he emailed me and said I need you to interview somebody I said okay I've never interviewed anyone before and I was like okay well I'm sure I can do this and that's the kind of attitude that I have and that's why I probably I'm involved in everything because mm -hmm. I figure if you can do it I can too right so um, I agreed to it he told me Okay, now it's going to be Melinda Williams. And I was like, why does that name sound familiar? And then he was like, Soul Food. I was like, so I'm, I'm about to interview an actress, like a real person, like a celebrity? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, you can't spring stuff like that on people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was an amazing feeling. I, I was really grateful that he looked mm. at me to do something like that. Were um, you nervous? Very. <laughs> I mean, I had never interviewed anyone, and then just a celebrity that I love, mm -hmm. I was, I kept saying, I, I know he's not talking about Melinda Williams, not the real one, right. you know, like, it must be somebody here named Melinda, too, but, I mean, um, Denim uh, just I, I has opened up a lot of doors for me and for the rest of the team, mm -hmm. and so I've enjoyed um, interviewing all these celebrities, and they are just awesome. One of my favorites, of course, Melinda, and Vanessa Williams has been awesome. She asked, she kind of reminds me of my mom, but she's the coolest person. Really? We talk a lot on Twitter. I love her to death. Um, it's just, it's awesome to see people that you watch on right. television or in the movies and then be able to have a dialogue with them mm -hmm. and they actually open up to you it's so much fun oh, i can imagine I, it's, it's a blast i get a kick out of it i'm just like oh my god so how long have you been doing that <laughs> um it's been a year. a year um actually denim kicked off august 5th on our birthday mm -hmm. yes august 5th kicked <laughs> off then um last year uh -huh. and uh, we're in the transitioning phase right now things are blowing up for denim Right. Um, so God knows what he's going to have me doing. Right. You know, I'm probably still be interviewing people, but in what capacity, God knows. But everything, we're going through a new uh, transition, new website and everything mm -hmm. like that. So I, I'm excited and can't so wait for everybody to see what happens. Is it a, is it a digital? Um, it's online, yes. Okay. And mm -hmm. what, what's the website for? It's um, denimmagazine.net. Okay. And uh, right now, like I said, we're going through transition. Mm -hmm. So there are some things that, being, that are being tweaked, and I cannot wait. There's going to be something very special coming up. Jay hasn't even told me yet. He's just telling me to wait. Right. You'll see. So. Now, okay, so is it a monthly, biweekly um, um, issue? Monthly. Monthly? Yes. Okay. So make sure y'all check out denimmagazine.net. And, like, are you, you doing, like, one interview a month or... Uh, it depends. Like back in January, I ended up having to go to LA, and we did like four actresses at one time, mm -hmm. or actors at one time, and it was back to back to back to back. Do that. I I went. Well, you know, with the whole team went. Ooh, um, nice. That that was something I was not missing. <laughs> I'd never gone to LA before, and I always wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Um, just to walk down Sunset Beach and be like, man, I'm supposed to be right here. I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I had a great time talking to the different people and just, it was just, it was wonderful. Nice. And it was like, we're not working, even though I don't remember really sleeping and I don't I mean, remember LA, really like eating. Sleeping's here Yeah. Here. <laughs> uh, we had a whole saying of eating flavored air because we were trying to get our bodies in shape for right. LA. <laughs> so we were eating flavored <laughs> air. Um, but we had a really good time, and the people were so wonderful. Nice. They were wonderful. Well, we're going to take a small break, and we're really going to get down to the meat of things and what's going on. So make sure you stay tuned, and we'll be right back with Miss El Cherie Dean. To connect with El Cherie, log on to www.theelcheriealert.com or email thealert at gmail.com or Facebook, The El Cherie Alert, Twitter, The El Cherie, Instagram, The El Cherie Alert, and LinkedIn, El Cherie Alert. Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network. Violator 
all-star DJs. Exposure TV is produced by Peaches, host and producer of On Location TV. Thanks to House of Pain for their assistance. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DB, DJ Rain, and we're sitting here with Miss L. Cherie Dean, the founder of the LCherieAlert.com. Cherie, we were just talking about some of the mini hats that you wear. Mm -hmm. um, now we're going to kind of get into the projects that you have. Um, How did you get started on so many projects? Not saying no. Not saying um, no? Everybody, I guess, people kind of saw my work ethic. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I like to tell people is be mindful of what you're doing and what you're involved in because you never know who's watching. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what happened. Right. Every, I mean, people were watching. I didn't know were watching. And, you know, they were like, hey, would you like to help us with this? Or can you help us with this? You seem to be good at this. You seem to be great at that. And me, I'm just, okay, mm -hmm. sure, you know, put my name down. So <laughs> it, it was never really like I sat and thought about it. Mm -hmm. um, although I'm trying to do that a little bit more because I have so much more um, that I have to, you know, I have less time now. Right. So, more um, projects, yes, less time. More projects, less time, especially with the Elsheree <laughs> Alert. So it's, uh, that has started to kind of overshadow everything. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of how I got started, just saying yes. Now, throughout the year, like, how do you kind of determine, you know, what you're going to take on and what you don't? That's the thing. I really don't. You haven't, you haven't figured that one I out yet. I haven't really figured that one out yet. Like, uh, as, again, I still get people, you know, mm -hmm. coming to me, asking me to do things. And, you know, if it's interesting enough for mm -hmm. me to be like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And one thing I always ask when um, people ask me, you know, to be on their committee or help them put an event together, I'm like, okay, what's your budget? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what have you already done to get this started? What are your goals for it? What planning has been put together? You know, I want to know to see if they're really serious about it because, you know, a lot of people are doing things because they see other people doing right. it and they feel like you can make a quick buck here or a quick mm -hmm. buck there. And that's not really how it's done, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot more to it than that. Right, you build um, it. It's, right, you have to build it. You know, mm -hmm. you have to, you know, get some supporters and everything. So I'm, I'm taking, I've taken that a little bit more seriously now because I, I realize, you know, the El Shari Alert mm -hmm. now comes before. I know that might sound bad, but it, it's my company, it's right. my baby. So that now comes before everything. Right. So I have to be mindful, and then it has to have a positive light. I can't on the El Shari Alert say that everything I do is positive or everything I'm involved in is positive and that the El Shari Alert is positive but then do something negative or that's not as clean. Right. So, um, you know, I have to, you know, kind of be mindful because now I'm putting my name out there. Mm -hmm. So, and, and whatever I do represents me. So, I now, have to be a little bit mindful. We know that you do, you know, a lot of work uh, in the community. Mm -hmm. um, so, tell me, tell me, you know, why, why do you think community involvement is so important? Community involvement is very important. Uh, one of the reasons is because, and this is something that my parents have taught me at a very young age, although I used to look at them like they were crazy, like what mm -hmm. they got to do with me, um, not in a selfish way, but more or less like, well, I don't really know them, you know, but that's not what it's about. You know, it takes a village to raise a child, and I think a community is a village, mm -hmm. and there, are, there is a child or there are children who need support, who need assistance, who need help on different things, you know, um, tutoring, mentoring, making sure they're fed, I mean, making sure they have money to do X, Y, Z. I mean, there's just different things, and I feel like it's very important. And once, when you teach the children how important it is to be in, to love your home, to love your community, and love the people within it, then you eliminate um, violence, you eliminate school dropouts, you eliminate drugs and alcohol. So I, I really feel that um, communication, or not communication, but community involvement, mm -hmm. as well as communication, is very important. Mm -hmm. And that's why I enjoy doing it, because it makes a difference in not only my life, but the people around me, and it, it makes a difference in the children's lives, and it's contagious. I think it's contagious. Yeah. I think um, doing something positive and someone continuously seeing that, that kind of, that, that falls off you and like kind of feeds on them. So right. I, I think it's a, a good thing. So what, what projects do you have now going, you say like really 
uh, directly or involved with the community? Um, well, I did a couple of um, golf tournaments. Mm -hmm. uh, helped co coordinate those. Um, the Urban League recently had one, and it was in conjunction with Tyson Foods, and they are doing the Mississippi Hunger Project, and that's gone. That's been going on for um, a few months now. And I kind of, I've been actually helping Tyson with uh, a lot of their social media, getting the, the information out about Mississippi Hunger Project and Mississippi Food Network and the National Urban League. Um, oh, nice. So it's, that's been a lot of fun and yeah. has actually opened up some doors for me as well. But that those events, um, the nutrition fairs that happened, um, I think it was uh, September 19th and September 21st, mm -hmm. those uh, events that happened, they basically help put food back into the communities okay. for the, you know ending hunger there's several statistics stating that there are a lot of people who even work mm -hmm. um, you know full time that still don't have enough money to feed themselves or uh, you know it's, it's not really helping like they may make too much money for assistance but they're still hungry mm -hmm. so it, it's just it's opened my eyes to a lot you know right. um, so doing that, um, Magnolia Bar Foundation recently had a golf tournament, September 21st. Um, I think it was uh, honoring um, R. Jess Brown, but also proceeds were going to scholarships for young lawyers and other mm -hmm. charities, Toys for Tots, and um, just different things. So that directly impacts our community or right. the Jackson, Mississippi area or in the state at large. So that's a couple of things that I've been involved in. Awesome. Now, I'm going to skip forward a little bit, and let's talk about the ElsheryAlert.com. Now, tell me how this came about. Um, it was a joke. Mm -hmm. um, I was on Twitter. You know, everybody um, always asks me every weekend, okay, what, what's going on this weekend? Mm -hmm. People from out of town, we're coming to Jackson, what's going on? And I was like, I don't know if y'all haven't heard, but Jackson has the Jackson Visitors Bureau. <laughs> <laughs> they have Jackson Free Press. Why are y'all asking me? Right. And they said, well, it seems like you're at everything and you know everything that's going on. And, you know, I was like, okay. So as a joke, I took a list of all the fun activities and events that was going on one weekend that I would go to. Like something I was like, okay, that looks cool. Like that would be something fun. And especially if it was free or something for the family and mm -hmm. they may not know about it. And I just wrote out a whole list and started tweeting it and putting it on Facebook. And then I just, to be funny, put the Elsh Real Alert. Mm -hmm. Don't know where that came from. Literally came out of thin air. Mm -hmm. And so when I did that, people started looking for it every week. And I was like, really? I said, okay, I have to do something with this. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I went to sleep one night and um, had this weird dream about interviewing people and talking to people about things that they, they're doing in their communities, not just in Jackson, right. but in you know communities in the country in the world. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, man, that was a weird dream. Man, that sounds like fun. So I was like, ooh, I can still name it the El Sheree Alert. Mm -hmm. So that happened and somewhere in the dream or somewhere in my brain, I don't know if I was really asleep or not, but that slogan um, that I have, you don't have to be famous to be relevant, do something positive, that came out of nowhere as well. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was asleep, mm -hmm. but you know, for me to remember that meant a lot. Right. It had to mean something because I never remember a dream. Mm -hmm. I hardly ever remember a dream. Hardly ever. If there's anything I a quote or something, I forget that. wasn't gonna remember it. So I, that that was that's kind of how that got started. And I threw it out social media just to see what kind of response with a fake logo and everything. And it still, you know, everybody loved it. So that's kind of how that got started. Cherie, we have so much to talk about, and there's Yay. so much more I want to know. So we're actually going to close this segment out right. uh, and do a part one and a part two. So make sure that you tune in next week for part two of the El Cherie. <laughs> <laughs>